Well, 2005, the economy in Virginia was, was pretty good. We'd come out of um, a recession, and we had this whole series of programs called Virginia Works. And it was workforce training, it was how to get access to capital. And honestly, I didn't know what a CDFI was. What I sort of remember in that phase was uh, uh, your Secretary of Commerce and Trade, Mike Shule, uh, calling me and saying, Chuck Mills, I need $7.5 million. Now, we had just come off the back of the budget cuts for where we had. Right. Well, and, no details. details. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, 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 you know, and, and, we, and we made that investment, so to speak, and so did Bill. And, and this $15 million, I think we're close to $300 million now. 15 years later, $300 million in assets. If you can't say that that has been a huge success of the use of public dollars, what can you? So I'll take you back, and uh, we were sitting in this room, and there was about 15 people in there, and there were rural leaders from all over Virginia, and I started talking about uh, Community Development Bank, and yep. I, I got about three minutes into the conversation, and Mike was a skeptic, by the way. He was a little apprehensive, and you went, we're going to do that. And well, I do remember saying we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we, what you didn't see is when we walked out of that door and got about five steps outside of your office, Mike looked at me and was, you idiot, what are you doing? Yeah. It's like, are we going to be able to do this? Can we really do this? So uh, it was very gratifying to have the support. There's always the, you know, the politics that everybody focuses on in the paper, but behind the scenes, the, you know, the governor and the delegate and others that were involved in this all shared kind of a common objective, which was to try to do things that were good for the people of Virginia and to have impact. And so it brought them together. I was actually in Charlotte uh, when the VCC concept was being um, brewing up here in Virginia. As I came back to Virginia, some of my friends who were in affordable housing and some of the sectors that we really care about came knocking on my door and they kind of said, what could you do with $15 million? And I said, oh, there's all kinds of things you could do. And I started saying, you can do this and you can do this and you could vision this and you could get this leveraged. And, and they're like, and how would you like to help us? <laughs> and I said, oh no, I just retired. I'm going to ride horses and I'm going to go backpacking and uh, well, just come and, you know, kind of consult with us. And so we set about building the idea and uh, one thing led to another and next thing I know I was working it part-time and then I was full-time and and then I was the first founding executive director soon to be bank president when the bank opened. I think back to that and I think why do, why do they trust us? Why? And, and, and it takes me back to the values that we've put in this organization from the very, very beginning. Um, you know, the value of transparency, the value of reporting back to everybody and anybody who wants to hear what we're up to. Um, the value of always balancing mission, not just finances. I mean, today the board is still comprised of bankers and mission people, and we keep that tension and that balance at the board and in the staff because that's that's what we have to manage every day. I'm really proud of that. I, I think we've done a good job. Well, I think the secret has been that once we established a track record and we had credibility, uh, we have led. And I don't mean by the board, I mean the whole organization that essentially we've uh, essentially done things that other people were not doing. And we have offered to help other people do things that aren't being done. And so uh, in all of that, I think the innovation has, has come through loud and clear. And so now uh, you're not having to market yourself uh, and tell people you're innovative. You've proved it to them. And that's another beauty of the organization. It's just innovative. I mean, again, that's I think, part of the culture. Yeah, that's part of the culture. And that's a kind of exciting part because when you say that sometimes when you say that we're involved with a with a, a bank or a lending institution, folks could, could think it's going to be stodgy and all buttoned up and so forth and so on. And while certainly there's some of that, because like you said, you know, we have regulators and, and, you, and you certainly want to protect the resources you have. But at the same time, it's a very innovative culture, very innovative organization. Yeah. You know, we've tried a few things as a company. And um, some of them have panned out really, really well. Some of them haven't. But nobody said, oh, can't try anymore because we failed on that one. We just said, what lessons did we learn? How could we tweak? How could we, Jim's favorite word, how could we pivot? And let's go back at it again right. and see if we Make can a get plan. a different result. Make a plan. <laughs> Make a plan. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's that can do attitude and you, or entrepreneurial attitude, as Absolutely. you call it. 
The makeup of the board has always been very um, diligently planned. We've picked board members who are um, creative, innovative, um, bring um, some wonderful skill sets. Some of them are bankers, but they have to be bankers who don't think traditionally. Some of them are mission people, but they have to be mission people who understand that you can't help anybody if you don't survive. This whole board is about advancing um, anti-poverty initiatives and helping people rise up economically. And, and, and we don't care, the board doesn't care if it's a Republican thought or a Democratic thought, it doesn't matter. The, the, what matters is are we going about our business and helping people and helping communities and helping them advance the way they want to. The, the board has that dynamic to say, you know, well here's all the reasons we should, or here's all the reasons we shouldn't, right. but What's the mission? I mean, what? How does this fit in mission-wise, and and not just business-wise, and and what happens? What changes if we take this risk in the I think, community? I think we could probably go on a record to say that we were probably one of the first organizations, banking institutions, financial institutions that had an impact committee, and, and create the, a board committee to govern it. A committee to govern it. Yeah. That's, uh, I, that's you again won't innovative. You will find that at a regular bank. Correct. In that same way, we've raised money in different ways, but um, a lot of the sources of our financing are very much interested in our impact. Now, this is, there's a lot of forces in this country that are moving in different directions, uh, but there's a strong commitment to going to see positive things happen for people in places that have not been a focus or intention. And so I think BCC is really poised to be part of that uh, solution, quite frankly. Uh, both, both as an entity itself, but also as a model for others. I think there is this moment in time as we, you know, grapple not only with COVID, but in, you know, the, the host of systemic racism that we see, see in, on an economic front, a policing front. There is a moment in time where I think America is ready to step up how do we really, you know, out of this crisis, make sure that we, as much as possible, level the playing field towards access to capital? And you and I have talked about this before, Chuck, because, you know, we live in a Virginia that's, at this point, 35% people of color. If that, if one third of Virginians aren't getting access to capital in a fair way, Virginia is not going to be able to compete. So this is not only morally the right thing to do, it's bottom line Econ 101, right thing to do. And that's again where CDFIs, by their nature, that requirement that, you know, 60% roughly have to be, you know, lent into low and moderate income communities. You know, whether they're communities of color, whether they're communities in Appalachia. And we've got, uh, you know, Virginia's made great strides, but we've still got, we've still got a ways to go to make sure everybody gets that fair shot that I think we all, we all aspire to. Someone once referenced us as the Switzerland in the community, and I thought, isn't that a great reference to be? The neutral party that can mm -hmm. just bring different funding sources to the table and say, here's the goal, you know, how do we get there? And, and, and without an agenda. And um, CDFIs, I think, play that role often in their community. And, and we've always defined success as helping the customer advance their costs, not our costs. And so if, if, if we don't have the resources, but we can bring somebody else's resources or direct them that way, absolutely. I've always felt, you know, you shouldn't have to leave your hometown to find a world-class job. We still haven't made that promise a reality. We still have way too many regional disparities. Minority-owned businesses were sole proprietors. Right. They bootstrapped their way into existence. They were successful, but they didn't have traditional banking relationships. Right. But it again pointed out the need that we have part of our financing structure that's going to focus on underserved communities. And that's again where that's BCC where and the CDFIs come in in a big, big way. With this need to support you know, minority depository institutions and CDFIs, we took the plan that I, you know, I've been lucky enough to get then Senator Kamala Harris to be a co-sponsor with me and, and credit where credit's due, you know, Donald Trump's Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, was a big backer of a bill of this bill. 
um, and I you know, got $12 billion. But it was kind of funny because there was like all kinds of people as we were going on saying, what's that $12 billion for? You know, and you know, what are these CDFIs? And I just said, you know, touch anything else you want. That's mine. Don't touch it. <laughs> and and uh, thank you. <laughs> well, we, thank you very much. Thank you. Know, as you know, three billion of that will go directly into grants into the CDFIs, twenty-four of which we have in Virginia, VCC being the biggest. But what I'm really excited about is the nine billion dollars of that twelve billion will go in so as we. <laughs> tier one capital uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and give you more capacity. So not just how do we help a business today in the mm -hmm. midst of COVID. But how do we increase the capacity of Virginia Community Capital and other CDFIs? That that nine billion, you know, I think even on a relatively conservative basis, will leverage about ninety billion dollars of lending, and that yes. should take the whole CDFI category and increase by about forty percent, you know, roughly. So well, and and that's what you brought to our history. I mean, when when you did the first. $15 million, you knew the leverage factor, I believe. VCC, um, you know, especially coming off of COVID and some of the other social unrest that exists in the country, is perfectly positioned uh, to really have an impact sort of similar to what we did 15 years ago, but now to a certain extent within, within these pockets within Virginia and quite frankly, I'll go so far as to say nationally, but starting in Virginia, to really have that same type of impact. And that's that's kind of what I look forward to uh, seeing us do in the next 15 years. Well, it's been a great first 15 years. Yep. You know, I'm glad you guys didn't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> you know, into an even greater next 25. It, it is a moment in time, and, and I think CDFIs can play a huge role in solutions collaboratively and 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 we'd love to be there i can't thank all of you enough for from the origin for being willing to in your responsibility and when you were working on the state side to help with that capital to continue both of you to help vcc grow and prosper um, these are this is a legacy we should all be proud of